And I'm like, well, what's that all about? Interesting. I'm looking for answers. So maybe Satori. Satori. Yeah. And so I started meditating and I was horrible at it because <laughs> I didn't know what it was. You know, I'd look it up and try to read about it and whatnot. And uh, then I started to read articles on websites and stuff. I'm like, well, this actually tracks back into the Christianity that I know because Jesus meditated. It says right so in the Bible, you know, 40, 40 days out in the desert. <clears throat> and uh, so I was like, all right, well, I'll try it. And so I started meditating. I started calming my mind. And then I started reading more about Zen, which to me is more of a philosophy of mind mastery than anything. And I worked on using the 800-pound gorilla of my mind to tame the 800-pound gorilla of my mind. Because <clears throat> from a practical perspective, they just want to cease all conscious thought and then find out what happens next. And so that's what I focused on. I was like, I want to shut my mind completely down. I want to hear nothing but silence and then see what I can hear from there. And there's a crazy thing that happened that I'm, for the last 20 years, I've been trying to figure out what the physiology and the science is behind it. But a different experience of consciousness arose within me when I got to a point of complete quietude. And it blew my mind. It was so dramatic and life-changing and such a weird experience that I literally thought I was dying. Like I zipped out of my body into the center of the universe and all of a sudden understood absolutely everything about how this whole universe works and like the, the crazy experience that came from shutting down conscious thought in my mind reset absolutely everything within me and brought me a ton of information that I didn't have like the day before. And so some of the stuff that I got out of it, and I, and I talk about that experience in the blue book that I wrote, volume two of Mind Hacking Happiness. So if you're interested in pick that up or whatever, but um, the information that I brought back from that was real valid information on how the human mind works, how we create our own pain and suffering, like the process that we go through to create our pain and suffering. And I put it into a theory, and I was just another guy with a theory on, you know, how here's how your pain and suffering works. But I put it into a very specific logical process flow of values and groupings of things and the process that your mind follows to create your bullshit. And I call it your mental bullshit. And then, between 2007 and 2013, all the science came out, the peer-reviewed published major journal science that proved every bit of what I had come back with correct. No kidding. Yeah. And so then I was like, okay, so now this raises a whole bunch of other questions in my mind because but besides having a practical understanding of um, you know, how you create your own pain and suffering and bullshit and how you can turn it down, et cetera. Now science has proven that that's correct. Okay, so now a whole new set of questions comes like, where did that come from? Like what information did I tap into that allowed me, who, a guy who has, you know, a psychology 101 course in his past from a community college at some point to come with a model that can explain the human mind and how it works? Well, before we, before we move into the next set of questions. Yeah. I have two questions. I want to say them out loud because I'll forget. <laughs> but um, one, how long did it take you to get into that type of meditation? How, how long did it take you? So I'd like to talk about that. Two, what was the initial download? So let's start with one. Okay. So one, it wasn't very long um, because I just went at it. In fact, the, it was less than two months that I started meditating that this weird thing occurred and that I like zipped out of my body and went off into the middle of the universe and understood everything. And then uh, when I was coming back, I was losing a lot of it. I was losing all, all the stuff, all the stuff that I understood. I was like coming back into my existence. In fact, one of the portions of the existence was, okay, time to go back. And I was like, what do you mean go back? I was like, I don't want to go back. What are you talking about? And then it was like, you're going back. And I was like, oh, okay. So maybe, you know, reincarnation is real. I'm going to go back and be a human baby, whatever it was. Um, and then I realized I was coming back to my body, my existence. And I was like, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm here in the middle of everything and I understand everything and I got to be one with the whole universe and yada, yada, and you're putting me back in this shit, you know? And it's, uh, 
But then, you know, I started losing a lot of stuff and I was like, no, wait, 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 I don't want to lose everything. You can't just show this to me and not like, you know, get, get allow me to help folks. And it was the feeling that I got was like, well, what do you want? And I was like, well, I want to, let's knock out this pain and suffering thing. Let's knock out, you know, the, the human limitation of being controlled by fear and controlled by anger and controlled by sadness and all the things that like limit our existence and stop us from being, you know, joyful and happy all the time. And uh, the, the kind of feeling the message I got back was like, yeah, okay, so you aren't the first. You know, and that was kind of a joke, kind of a poke at, you know, a lot of the other masters dipped into the same thing and look what they did. I'm like, okay, well, I'll give it a shot anyway. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, and so it was just within a few couple months, though. A couple of months you were able to tap in? Yeah. I've been meditating off and on for, I started after my first psychedelic experience, to be honest with you. Yeah. And that was roughly a year and three months ago. Yeah. And I felt the oneness one time. Yeah. And that was meditating outside uh, in nature. I I have, I'm just going to tell you what I do, you yeah. know, and, I'm, and maybe you can critique me because because I want to go to the center of the universe. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> in meditation. So I, I put headphones on. I listen to frequency music, like the stuff we were listening uh, when we were when we were setting up the photo shoot and everything for the for this episode, I do that. And then, have you ever heard of a Rife machine? Yeah. So I know you're very familiar with frequency. So I put a Rife machine on, and uh, I put it on my feet. Sometimes I put it on my hands. Sometimes I put it on both. So basically, for those listening who don't know what a Rife machine is, a Rife machine sends a series of frequencies through your body. And uh, it's kind of holistic medicine. Yeah. And you probably know a lot more about this than I do. I just got a Royal delivered to my house, the Royal Rife machine. Really? Yeah. So from what I understand, the Rife machine, it does all kinds of good things for you. But it, it, um, it can break up bacteria. It can break up viruses. They say it can break up cancers, yeah. um, cancer cells. And, 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 and from what I understand, it's also very grounding. It, it puts you at the, at the right frequency that we're supposed to be operating at. Yeah. I even put a grounding sheet on my bed. Wow. Do you know what a grounding yeah, sheet is? Yeah, totally. I tried to buy one. I got one off of Amazon and it wasn't really doing a whole lot. And I tested it with a multimeter. It wasn't even connected. Like they were selling a sham. Like they, you know, I, I believe in the science because I've read the reports and read the studies. Like that's real science, real stuff that'll help you. But the stuff they sell on Amazon doesn't, like the ground doesn't have a connection to the mat. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, so, I've been looking for a new one then. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but, um, yeah, you know, so that's, that's, and then I sit in a, I have a bad back, so I sit in a love sack. Okay. Like a big beanbag chair, yeah, and uh, just try to totally relax. Sometimes I can get far and get. And the way I do it is, I just when I meditate, I kind of let. Um, how do I explain this? I'm not the greatest at controlling my thoughts, yeah. And so how I do it is, I try to let every thought in my head play out, and. Sometimes this could take hours. Yeah. Most of the time I don't have hours. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll do it for, I, if I get a 45 minute one in, I feel like I've accomplished something. Yeah. Even if I haven't accomplished anything and I just sat by myself for 45 minutes, I feel good about it. But yeah. every once in a while, all the thoughts, it's like every thought will play through my head. Yeah. And I'll get to the point where I'm thinking about nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I realize I'm thinking about nothing. <laughs> and, I, and I snap out of it. And I don't know how long I was actually thinking about nothing. So the way I'd like to describe it is if you're looking down, it, it, picture your thoughts like clouds. Right. And the clouds pass by, and then another thought comes in your head. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's good stuff. It's things that are bothering you. It's things that I have to do today, things that I have to do next week, and, 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 and guilt and all these different emotions and thoughts are just going through my head. And, and every once in a while, all, every thought goes through my head. Everything plays out, and it's 
100% calmness. Yeah. I, but I don't know how long I'm in that calmness or I'm in that in that state. Yeah, in that state, the, there's a separation of time, right? Where time just kind of doesn't become a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. What you just perfectly explained, well done, by the way, is a meditative uh, state of vipassana. And so there's a word for it. It comes from like this ancient uh, Buddhist practice where you simply just observe your thoughts, but you don't add anything to them. Like your thoughts come in, but you don't really interact with them. You just kind of let them do their thing. And like you said, the cloud floating by and then it floats out. And then you're just waiting for the quiet. And that's from my perspective, that's your subconscious trying to raise things for your awareness. And we'll get into you know how your brain is your organ of survival. It starts throwing things up that says, you know, should we pay attention to this? Should we pay attention to this? And your non-reaction to that proves two cool things. One, that you're not your mind, but you can observe your mind, which means there always needs to be a space between um, an observer and the observed. So you're proving to yourself that your own consciousness isn't the product of your mind, which is a really cool thing to notice. But then the other thing is... Can you say that again? That you're... Your, the, your consciousness is separate from your mind. Like if you can observe your mind from your consciousness, you're proving to yourself that it's not the same thing. That the observer that's sitting in the chair watching your mind isn't your mind because a tooth can't touch itself or can't bite itself. A fingertip can't touch itself. Uh, an eyeball can't see itself without some distance in a mirror. There needs to be a space between the observer and the observed. And so at any point that you're observing your mind, you're proving to yourself you aren't your mind. Your mind is something that's doing, that's uh, working for you, certainly in assistance of, of your existence, of your physiology. But your consciousness is something different. And when you dig into that, that's your true essence. It's not your mind and the things that are happening in your mind and the emotions that are arising and all this other stuff. That's a process of your physiology. You're the thing inside working your physiology, driving your physiology, experiencing this human existence, but you're not this thing and the operation of your mind if you can see your mind because there has to be some distance between the observer and the observed. Wow. That's uh, fascinating. Yeah. That's fascinating stuff.